what was it like going back to London at 28, you know, having had, like, was it another culture shock? Because I mean, I imagine London must have changed so much in the 24 years that you've been away from it. It was a lot of things. Um, it was, it was life-saving in some aspects for me, um, cause I really needed change, um, of what I was doing. Of you know, mm -hmm. And, um, when I say here, I say, I mean, Hungary, um, yeah. just cause I'm physically here now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair play. Um, so yes, that, um, and the culture shock for me came a bit later, actually. Okay. So that's probably something to do with that year of like not being sure that I want to stay here. And I still thought that I'm going to go back and do continue my stuff in Hungary. Mm. Um, and because of that, it was more inspiring opposed to, whoa, what, what, what am I going to do here? And how am I going to do that? And how I'm going to breathe and stay alive? Because then yes. a year later, we made the decision and we did move. And that's a result of a lot of things that happened in that year. A lot of extreme things here again. Like uh, that year for me was like wall to wall, crazy things like a roller coaster. And um, and so we made the decision that we're going to move to London. We're still young enough to um, to literally start from zero. I mean, I was doing my master's, so not zero, zero. But like we didn't have a career here. We didn't have, um, you know, nothing to like go to and you know you're not um, a name or not like hi this is me this is what i've done and okay get into that because i am curious about something you're opening up so many questions but i am <laughs> keep talking keep talking okay so um so yeah so that's september 2019 and then we moved for good and mm -hmm. at that point i was like here I am. I have so many plans. I've got so many inspiration. I'm going to do everything that I had that really naive. And actually now three years later, I feel like it's terribly sweet actually, but like, it's, like it's adorable. Bless your heart. It really is like that. I really came to London like that. Um, and I was like, I, I, I worked as artistic director of my own company for 10 years in Hungary. I built up a lot of things. And at that point I was like, you know what? I'm going to work in a bar. I don't care. I want a new life. I want to build it up from zero. I'm going to get into that. The first bar that I see, I'm going to work there. I'm going to be, you know, I'm building myself up from zero. So that all started and it was good for a while. Um, and then it started. Oh yeah, I know. My first shock was when I went to uh, a Lion King open audition as a dancer. And what I'm used to in Hungary, I, you know, we do some auditions here, but most of the time it's like your, your phone rings and someone calls you that like, oh, hi, we need another dancer. We need a choreographer. We need a whatever. Are you available? I'm like, yeah, of course I'm available. Or if not, I'll make myself available. Or if not, I'll juggle it out or whatever. Um, and then I was like, yeah, of course I need to go to auditions. You know, it's a new world, whatever. So I go to the Lion King audition and I get cut after the first round. I'm standing there being like, but why? I didn't understand. I, I, I'm used to getting jobs in the industry I've been working in. And I mean, the Hungarian theatre industry is not tiny. It is quite big. Um, compared I mean, yeah, to it's, theatre is massive. It's a very different system. It's still the old, you know, there's companies touring and, you know, you're years in a company. I, I talked about this before with other people, but yeah, it's very different. It's like the old what they used to have with the repertoire theatre. That's what was still going on in Hungary. Yes, exactly. But it is, it's not like it's tiny. It is a, it is a big scene in Hungary. Um, and so from that, just going straight into, I don't understand how I cut after the first round. Cause I was like, of course, maybe I'm not going to get the job, you know, da, 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 da. but, but just the shock of being cut after the first round and then seeing the time, the schedule, like next group of 50, next group of 50 dancers, next group of 50 dancers until the end of the day. I was standing then. I was like, I had this feeling of like, I don't understand what, what did I, what, what was not good enough? What was wrong? What, and then the spiral started and like, I don't, I don't, I just can't deal with it. It's too big. I don't understand. What yeah, do I that's, need? that's the numbers game. And also it, it is a funny thing in this business, but, um, like what, how long was that audition? In like time wise. Yeah. 20 minutes. Right. 30. 20 minutes for 50 people figure out who's going to be good. Good luck. Okay yeah <laughs> I, I yeah that's that's just the numbers game in the uk that you gotta have to outlast or or maneuver around it or do your own stuff and yeah yeah but that i'm just so that for me was something that i did not expect um mm. and you know 
I, I did expect it to be different, to be harder, to be whatever, but I didn't expect it to be so much bigger. Um, yeah. As I said, I think was really sweet and my um, sweet, naive, um, yeah, of course, I'm going to come here, I'm going to do it. Which, which you know, now three years later, I kind of am doing in, in, in slightly... I mean- I was going to say, I'm the, not that long ago, you were performing at the Her Majesty, Her Royal Majesty's Jubilee. And so uh, let's not forget about it. And was it in Windsor Castle, was it? Yeah, it was. Uh, that was really nice, actually. That was a really yeah, nice Yeah, so, all right, all right, look at you go. I'm not complaining. I'm, I'm just saying that, that that's where the, uh, the culture shock kicked in for me. All right, so the industry culture shock, basically. Basically, yes. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, I think that's that's what I had to spend a little bit of time to deal yeah. with. I have to okay. figure out the agent situation um, and all that. Like agents here again in Eastern Europe, you don't really do agents. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So that was also a while to be like, right, but what, what, why do I, why do I need an agent? At all? Like, why, just, yeah. how, what kind of agent or how do I, like, I'm uh, just, I'm self-represented at the moment. Uh, but yeah I'm still learning that you know how do I pick an agent I mean I've learned a lot over the past couple of years I've just had my first agent uh, not that long ago but yeah just what do I need to look out for what works for me what doesn't work for me and all that stuff it's yeah you very much go into the deep end and figure it out there's no really books on how to you know yeah how to judge an agent for yourself and things like that so that's all uh yeah, there's a lot to learn in this business. That's not that's not taught in schools. You know, you they have to think about it. There's a lot. Yeah, there's a lot that goes along, comes along with it. Just the time management, keeping active, admin, every taxes. Oh my god! Oh my god! Yes, <laughs> but it's beautiful, and we love it. It is. It is. I. I feel. I feel like I am kind of aligning with myself and what works for me mm. kind of getting there now like I'm finding I'm, I feel like I'm just stepping on a path that's working for me um and looks sustainable I think that's something I am curious now because this brings up the first question I had was obviously so three years ago you know you, you hit the ground running and you just realized that you're you know you're running a massive herd of people right but has the fact that you've been working and being an active back home in Hungary counted at all? Did people look at it and go, wow, you've done all these things? Or did it go, yeah, it didn't happen here, we don't care. What was your experience with that? That's a really good question. Um, now, obviously, now three years on, you were performing in, her, in front of Her Royal Majesty. But in, when it started, you know, the, the industry was like, oh my God, you've been doing all these amazing things in Hungary, but wow. Or was like, yeah, okay. <laughs> Who are you? Um, I think it's a bit of both. Um, I think once people, um, once I had time to like talk to people about who I am or what I did. And show them. Yeah. Well, my, I've, got, I've got a very impressive CV, to be honest. And I think when I actually get to like, you know, my CV gets somewhere, um, it does open some doors for me. Um. And then sometimes I feel like it doesn't matter at all. And I'm just standing there being like, oh yeah, who's that girl? I don't know. Um, she looks a bit um, introverted and she doesn't really talk. So, um, whatever. but then that also might be my insecurity. I don't know. I yeah, think- that, yeah, that's true. That's unfortunately one of those things where people like to say, follow your gut, but the, your gut is not always right. Okay. Sometimes you just feel like shit because you're insecure or I'm insecure, you know, and that's, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's not as so, straightforward. I think it's a little bit of both. I think I, I think I managed to open some doors with my CV, um, but I also think some people. I, I, I did I did feel the well. We can't really. What does that mean? We don't know. We don't understand what's what's the. Yeah, value. it's hard. Yeah, yeah, it's hard to judge. Uh, like I've been doing ten years in this theater company let's say and they're like yeah but we don't know if that theater company is any good but that that mean well like what level is that what were you performing so i can understand that being a you know question yeah. mark because so i had well i didn't have the opportunity to to study acting back home i moved here and studied acting here but one of the reasons was 
I, I thought the best chance I can give myself in this business, in this career, is to have something that people can understand when I show them the CV and be like, I was like, if they can pronounce the name of the school, probably a better thing than if I just show this massive whatever school from back home and they're like, okay. Yeah. So I was curious if that affected, obviously, dance is a different industry as well. We had this conversation about how as a dancer you might be get you might get away with people just going seeing you visually and performing and not thinking about your accent and you know the way you talk and things like that so you might be able to pass more yes. as opposed to as an actor but uh, i'm just curious if that played a part at all just the I think, I think i think what you're saying about dancing and acting is a very important um difference there because yes as a dancer I think it's easier for me. Um, I do, so I do get, I tend to get responses to emails that I send for jobs that I, that I understand why I am good for now. Mm. Um, but then as an actor, the whole accent layer is something that I think is really, really difficult for Eastern Europeans. Um, only just because that's something that I never actually thought of. And I was a child in London. So I had, I had, I spoke, well enough but then still I had to face the fact that like here as an actor I'm using here for both London and Hungary that's so right well yeah because it's, it's your first and your second home now so <laughs> um in 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 whatever order <laughs> yeah. so um so the entire accent thing I wasn't prepared for that honestly that it's such a massive thing and then it's it really is a, a layer that in Hungary you don't have to deal with that whatever way you speak that's the way you speak yeah. but in English the accent is always a layer of your acting it has to be there has to be a decision about it there has to be something about it that's that makes it work for that um specific role yeah do I make it very thick or do I make it a bit softer or whatever exactly um so yes that's something that but that sometimes still frightens me that how because I can I'm, I'm good with all the European accents but for example mm. with UK accents <laughs> and also the, I mean the fact that you speak of French and German I mean those are that's a massive help for you yes I mean the, once you speak a language it's a lot easier to you know speak English in that accent obviously but yeah that's well done you lady <laughs> I, well, I want to get my German up to scratch one of that's one of the reasons because like, I want to be able to do an authentic German accent yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay I'm so I'm, I'm kind of circle back a little bit to that question of like, so you did find that it was a mixed bag, you know, the reception that you had here, you know, they didn't know what to think of you and some of the skills you've had, but then once you started practicing and they, you know, they see it, started seeing your skills, you're like, okay, on board, let's go. And yes. then